Christos, uh, as, um, as Maria highlighted as well. So uh, may I turn first to, um, uh, to uh, Sana, please? Exactly the same question, what should be done? They tell me those who have the means, the power and the will should do the following. One, reach out to those Afghan journalists and media workers who are still inside the country. They're hiding because of the Taliban takeover of the country and who they wish to leave Afghanistan and see how you might be able to help them if you can. Two, support those journalists who wish to remain in Afghanistan through funding, training and opportunities to tell stories they care about. Three, create a hub for all Afghan journalists and media workers who were evacuated so they can contribute to produce, collaborate and do what they do best, tell stories. And also to have a home somewhere in exile. Fourthly, they want the international community to exert pressure and demand accountability from the Taliban government in Afghanistan to respect freedom of speech and to provide a safe space for journalists to operate and do their job. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sana. So we, we are hearing from, um, from local journalists through your, through your voice. Uh, uh, Sheila, may I ask uh, what would be your your recommendations uh, moving forward. What, what is it that you are calling on all of those actors to do? I, I really welcome the Media Freedom Coalition and its efforts to support media freedom around the world. Um, but it needs committed staffing and funding so that it can deepen its work in the 10 countries and that it's the part of the pilot program and expand even beyond them. But I cannot stress this enough. The media need to be financially independent so they can do their work without fear of favor. The media markets in many countries have been distorted in favor of state and crony owned media. We need to level the playing field by giving independent news organizations access to grants, loans, and equity on a concessionary basis. We need to safeguard media pluralism, especially in countries where the media have been captured by state or oligarchic interests. I welcome Secretary Blinken's commitment to the International Fund for Public Media. In order, to, in order to maintain credibility, such funds should be done on a multilateral basis. So no single government or donor can have control. There are already models for doing so. Just recently, the Media Development Investment Fund launched a fund called Pluralis, which raised capital from private media companies, foundations, and impact investors. Pluralis has bought shares in European media companies in danger of media capture. Finally, I'd like to make a special plea for investigative journalists who are the special forces of journalism. They're not always financially viable, so they need to be supported in other ways through grants, legal defense, technology support, training, etc. There is much more that needs to be done not least giving voice and agency to local organizations who are key to the defense of press freedom and democracy and who are doing excellent work on the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. And uh, I think um, it's an important reminder indeed that uh, in the fight for media freedom, um, Money is going to be one of the key motor, and in fact, uh, indeed, uh, Jennifer reminded us in a in a uh, presentation that uh, she relies a lot on uh, uh, on funds from organisation abroad to uh, to 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 allow her to move forward with um, uh, independent reporting. So, um, Jennifer, can can I ask you as well? You know, what what are you recommending? To, um, to the summit? What would you like to see happening? I echo what Sheila just said, but I also want to add that it is important for governments uh, and relations. Uh, it is uh, necessary for governments in Central America to energe energetically call, uh, uh, make a call against uh, censorship and for uh, freedom of expression, and also to uh, address governments that you 
use punishment against the media. This is a concern in Central America, and it's important to be mentioned abroad. I also wanted to add and specifically say that for independent journalism in my country, the international community sometimes is the only partner for us to be able to do our job in a protected way, to be able to raise our voices in terms of what is going on in the work. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, Befang, can I turn to you now for your, for your recommendation? Thank you. Yes, of course. It's always a pleasure to go last in a panel filled with people <laughs> with amazing ideas. Um, so first, I wanted to say I agree wholeheartedly with all of my fellow panelists, but I did want to emphasize something that Dimitri touched on, which is the challenge of delivering content inside countries, something that RFA struggles with every day. So my recommendation is for governments who care about press freedom to work with the private sector to better fund the creation of tools, like the ones our sister organization, the Open Technology Fund, helps to develop that help deliver free press to people inside closed countries, as well as protect sources inside those countries from government surveillance and enable journalism to take place. Um, I also want to add that it's crucial for countries to give resources um, to groups that, that help independent journalists and uh, freelancers who often take on unconscionable risk in an effort to bring us news from, from conflict zones, especially. So we at RFA have signed onto the principles of the ACOS Alliance, which seeks to make it safer for journalists like Austin Tice, who was kidnapped nearly 10 years ago and now while, uh, while reporting in Syria. So our thoughts are with you, um, our other colleagues who are missing or detained around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Befang. And, and you, did, uh, you, you do remind us as well about uh, uh, the toll uh, paid by journalists in terms of their uh, personal freedom, but also in terms of their lives. So if I may add a few more recommendations as well, I think um, too many uh, journalists who are experiencing violence, who are being threatened, and indeed in worst case scenario, who are killed, in too many of those cases, there is no justice being delivered. And the regime of impunity is established the world over that appears to give the impression to, um, to powerful actors that they can silence with impunity, including through killing. So I think as an international community and indeed as national actors, far more must be done to effectively and properly investigate act of killings and, and violence against journalists. Myself, when I was um, doing so for uh, the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, it became very clear to me that the international community, in spite of highlighting the importance of press freedom at uh, its very first session in 1946, does not have the tool to address violence against journalists and, and the killings, does not effectively put emphasis on investigations. And I think it is incumbent upon all of us and all the member states of the UN to ensure that at international or at regional level, there are mechanisms that can either support national ones or that can provide um, an alternative truth telling to the killings and the violence that are taking place. Otherwise, the, the message that are being sent is that journalists can be killed and nothing will happen. There will be no truth and, uh, and no justice being uh, delivered. Um, I think we have um, uh, provided the audience of uh, the summit with a wide range of uh, recommendations from uh, including from local uh, journalists uh, all the way to the issue of um, financial independence. Uh, we've highlighted the role of uh, press freedom in, um, in, in, world, in the world, throughout the world. We've, I insisted that not one country is immune from uh, the global trends that we are witnessing in terms of attacks on press freedom and therefore attacks on uh, democratic values and, and human rights. And um, as we are now uh, coming to uh, the end of, uh, of that session, we just have the, the final uh, concluding remarks from the uh, Foreign Minister of Canada. I want to thank you all 
dear panelists, for everything you've um, you've shared with us. I want to uh, thank the organizers and the co-host for giving us the opportunity to start uh, the summit.